incredible treat being on this stage. I, I went to see this play, uh, or musical, I should say, a couple of years back on Broadway. Uh, it was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Never imagined that I'd be on the stage uh, for it. An incredible treat. Um, so talking of incredible treats, I really want to say that thank you to everybody who's come along to hear my thoughts on this matter. I really appreciate it. The lineup of speakers is really quite impressive in this event. So for you to come along and listen to my thoughts on this matter is another treat. So thank you for that. Introducing myself, this is my face, unfortunately. Um, I have been in this industry for around about 20 years and started as a developer and moved through uh, to an architect and then to a project manager and worked at both vendors. I started out at a vendor and then moved to investment banks and now adaptive financial consulting. Um, and I spent much of that career, much of that time, building some form of regulatory technology. Uh, and as you can see here, what I do at Adaptive is that I build uh, and am responsible for a portfolio of large-scale projects for our clients. Um, and this includes, amongst others, a, a major one-year-plus RegTech platform, which is built for a consortium of clients, which is very relevant to my proposal here. Um, and I'm just going to deal with three questions here. Uh, why is there a problem? What do I propose to do about it? And how would we go about doing that thing? So, pretty short list of three questions that we're going to deal with in this presentation. Um, why is there a problem? So, as you see here, building and operating reg tech platforms of various different types is absolutely necessary, right? If you get this wrong, the risks are immense. Obviously, fines, but reputational risk. Um, but it's also incredibly costly. And these two stats really jumped out at me when I was thinking about this presentation. It turns out that 40% of new build spend in the industry is aimed at some form of compliance platform. Uh, and firms report anything up to 10% of their general revenue being spent on compliance in some form or another. So these costs are immense. Uh, building and operating these platforms requires armies of personnel. Um, and in many cases, these folks are extremely smart, uh, extremely dedicated, but are also duplicating effort across the industry. There's a lot of vendor point solutions. Now, I should be clear here that some of these vendor point solutions are fantastic, right? They're really, really good. But at their best, they create... Uh, integration spend and integration risk in that you've got to get your data into these point solutions and you've got to somehow get your data out of these point solutions. It requires new APIs that you need to contend with, new data models, databases, all the rest of it. That You've got to figure out how to integrate this new asset with your, with your tech stack. The expectations for RegTech are immense. Um, and this five-year timeline here, uh, to me, is really important. It, it shows to me that every single year in this five-year block, there's some new regulation set which we're going to have to contend with. And that's going to be broad regulation set that, we're gonna, that, that is, is going to change businesses in some way or another in terms of being able to comply with it. And, and this isn't going anywhere. This is a trajectory that's not going anywhere. Meanwhile, we don't have the bandwidth to engage with emerging technologies. So we've got artificial intelligence here. We've got machine learning. We kind of all know instinctively that these things could really change what we do with these massive data sets that pump through RegTech platforms. We could get real insights from this data. Uh, but instead, we just don't have the bandwidth to contend with it because we're focusing on compliance. Um, includes things like know your data rather than know your customer. Uh, and, and it includes things that we haven't even thought about yet. Categories of approaches and technologies that we haven't even thought about. Uh, meanwhile, big tech is starting to enter the market. And this is, at the moment, in the form of you know, things like white labeling. Right? So you know, credit cards, which are white labeled, that sort of thing. Um, I contend that that's a toe dipping into the water. 
to figure out how to proceed. That's like the start of something, the start of a process rather than uh, the culmination of a process. And these firms, as we say here, they don't have large and fractured tech stacks. Uh, they don't have 200-year histories of acquisition like some of the organizations in our industry have, where you know, firms have subsumed other firms which have their own tech stacks, uh, and then they need to be integrated with your own existing complex tech stack. They don't have decades-old legacy systems built in COBOL or Visual Basic, which is where I started my career. Uh, but they do have determination and deep pockets. So what is my proposal? Well, I think that there are three possible futures. I think we can be disrupted, or we can be acquired, or we can compete. And for me, competing means focusing spend on areas for your business that are about competitive advantage, are about differentiation, and not about utilities. And that begs the question, what do I mean by a utility? So this thing is a Wardley map, um, which I found really interesting. I only re recently found out about these. But I think it's a really interesting way of uh, representing and mapping value for an organization. I'd, definitely advise you to go and learn about these things. And what it's showing here is that a regulatory reporting platform, for example, is something that's necessary, but it's not differentiating. So the canonical example of something that might be similar would be a data center, right? We don't want to be in the business of reinventing a data center, just use it as a commodity. Um, and I contend that a regulatory reporting platform should really be in the same category. And I'd say that such a platform has got a few additional requirements. It needs to lower costs, because that's one of the key aims that we've got, we have identified. It needs transparency of implementation. And what I mean by that is I'd be worried about forcing my data for a reg tech stack that I didn't understand. I'd want to know what was going on in there, just because of the risk involved of you know, fines and reputational risk. I don't want just another vendor relationship. And I need to use an approach that enables efficient knowledge transfer and cooperation between organizations. That seems necessary if I'm going to get involved with other organizations and set this up as a utility. With this said, as I said before, there are many fantastic point solutions out there in the reg tech world. And whatever we do to solve this problem it should still allow for those point solutions, not just from vendors, but also in-house, because there may be cases where you'd have point solutions in-house that are relevant to your reg tech stack. And I propose this is what the answer might look like. So for me, this is an open core model where you have an open source reg tech stack that forms a backbone, a framework, of contending with regulatory reporting, for example. Well, that's not the only area that we could look at. And that backbone exposes well understood and standard and clearly known APIs that vendors and indeed in-house solutions can integrate with easily. Um, and we've got two vendors here, two different vendors offering two different solutions. Over here, we've got some proprietary point solutions that might be relevant to an organization. And I think it's important to say that, I say that there's no differentiation. That's not quite true. I can imagine areas where you'd be able to differentiate in regulatory technology. Um, perhaps, you know, whether that's a risk model that you think that um, you can produce, which uh, produces insights into your books and you look over the same data um, and apply that risk model to it. If you've got a clear API and a clear standard and a clear integration point, you can produce these point solutions and lower the integration risk and the integration spend and all of the hassle that comes with integration, integrating with yet another point solution. Now, I want to point out that, uh, as it says here, this isn't a silver bullet, right? This isn't going to remove costs. This isn't going to suddenly save billions across the industry overnight. All of these companies here uh, use this model in various different forms, and they pay 
armies of developers to contribute to and maintain those open core solutions. Um, but these are smaller armies. And these armies would be amortized throughout our industry because we wouldn't have the duplication of effort that we've got now in whether it's understanding regulations, whether it's producing reports, whether it's developing platforms. So you might think that, well, one way that I can contend with this problem is that I can just say, I'm going to decouple my reg tech stack to the extent that I'm able to, and I'm just going to open source it. I'm just going to put it out into the industry. I'm going to upload it to GitHub. And I'm ready to go, job done. And I contend that it, it's certainly how generally functional building blocks have been open sourced up to now in the industry. That's certainly true. Uh, there are a few counterexamples of this. I think perspective is a really good example of, of a counterexample. It's something that's been quite effectively decoupled. But in general, I contend that solutions are coupled across a technical dimension, a process dimension, and your operating model, just the way that you do business, right? We, we, we all, it's, it's like Conway's law, right? And it's also difficult to outline what the incentive is for a single firm to do this. I think it's not impossible. I think we've saw, seen an example earlier on today. It's, it's not impossible to convince a firm to do this, but it's, it's kind of a difficult pitch. It's a difficult to sell. And I suggest that Instead, what we could do is we could have a federated open core model, which is driven by and overseen by a committee of representatives across, as they say, four quadrants. Right? So here I've got the buy side, and I've got the sell side, and I've got the vendors and the regulators all involved in this committee in one shape or form or another. Right? And I propose that each of these people have got clear benefits from being involved in such a such a federated model. Lowered costs uh, for the buy side and sell side is an obvious win. Uh, lower compliance risk is another, is not by any means limited to these two. Um, for vendors, there is now a clear integration point, and you can come up with a point solution, which is a value add, and you can say, here's our point solution, and you know that you can integrate with it, because we're all using the same standard, uh, it's going to be easy and straightforward, and you can just plug it in, and you're good to go. Meanwhile, for the regulator, not only do you get full transparency so the regulator can see, okay, now I, I can see how these compliance reports are being generated. I can see what's going on. I can see how the sausage is being made. Um, but they have confidence in your compliance. And also, one thing that I think is quite transformative to me as a thought is, I imagine a regulator saying something like, I want to take a report and I want to pivot it slightly, right? I want to take the data and I want to slightly represent it differently. I want to do a different calculation, whatever it might be. The process for getting such a change through to the industry at the moment is quite difficult and time consuming and long. And I can foresee a future where a regulator could just raise a PR. Now, obviously, there would have to be a governance procedure. And this PR would go through that governance procedure before it started proliferating throughout the industry. But you can imagine the benefits of scale that would come with a model like that. It could be incredible. There we go. So I contend that what we need to produce, produce is an open source and open core regulatory tech stack, which is produced and driven by four quadrants. So the buy side, the sell side, the vendors, and the regulators, because everybody will get benefit from such a platform. But how would we go about this, you may ask? So I think the first piece of good news to, to point out here is that the industry, as we say, has already shown that it's possible to collaborate successfully in many different regards. I think FDC3 is a great example of this. Uh, TradeWeb is another great example. Um, there was a, uh, a regulatory trading platform called Sentinel, which was produced by a consortium of banks in 2018, 
which was intended to address MIFID II as a regulation set. Um, so the industry's shown that they can collaborate, particularly where you know, the, the, uh, the requirements are known, the data in is known, and everybody kind of needs the same thing from such a platform. And there's certainly things that we need to talk about, but where to start is one of the things that seems to me to be quite obvious. Regulatory reporting feels like a set of vertical use cases that would be quite valuable to start with. As I said here, the data's going in, it, it's fairly standard and fairly standardly shaped, like a swap's a swap, pretty much. Uh, a standard outcome is expected of the reports that then find their ways towards the regulator. And given those two things, a known process must be applied to that data. So given all of that, this feels like a set of vertical use cases which would be a pretty good start for such a utility platform. Uh, we'd need a standardized information model. Uh, and again, I contend that dozens already exist. I don't think that we need necessarily to create an understanding. There may be tweaks, there may be devil in the detail, of course, and glossing over a lot of that devil in that detail. But I think that dozens of information models already exist, and we can pick one to start with. So this is not a problem that I think is existential to the approach. A technology platform, again, much of the industry agrees on certain platforms and languages and tools. Java is one example. Like, everybody uses Java pretty much in one shape or form. Uh, C++ is another example of various different things that we kind of know are ubiquitous or near ubiquitous in the industry, and we've agreed on these things. Um, around data security and privacy, uh, once again, there's broad agreement here on how to proceed. Uh, a lot of these discussions are happening around the cloud, um, and obviously, there are risks and questions and things to contend with for the industry in figuring out how to engage with the cloud, but you know, a lot of these discussions are being had and it's, there are pretty straightforward answers. And finally, in, in my judgment, for the governance and operating model for producing such a platform, which is very, very important, very critical, I contend that Finos has already solved this problem to a degree. I think it's a good example of an organization which could produce such a platform. So to summarize my proposal, we've got a set of problems, the chief amongst them arguably being cost, and obviously the amount of people that are involved um, in producing these reg tech platforms and operating them is an element of that cost. Uh, we have integration risk and integration spend that comes with integrating point solutions for RegTech. Um, and that includes value-add differentiating point solutions uh, that we might develop proprietary in-house. Uh, we've got new entrants coming in. And we kind of know that you know, white labeling is not going to be the end of that story, I, or at least I contend that that's not going to be the end of the story. And we know that the requirements aren't going anywhere. Um, so after 2022, there's going to be a whole new set of regulations and there's going to be changes to regulations and Basel IV and so forth. Um, and I propose that the solution is that not only that firms change their mentality about open source, and we're already seeing this, of course, you know, the fact that we're all here and we're all talking about these matters shows that we're changing our mentality. Um, but also finance changes their mentality about reg tech and starts to see it as what Simon Wardley calls a utility, something that is necessary, but not differentiating. It's something that we must do, but something that we don't get competitive advantage from. Uh, and the federal open core model, I propose, is a very good and very strong approach to getting this done in such a way that it could save Huge amounts of money across the industry, but also huge amounts of time and effort. Uh, and everybody in the reg tech world across all the four quadrants that I've identified would benefit from such an approach in various different ways. It's hard to see how anybody could con contest uh, their benefits from 
such an approach. So, that's my proposal, and that's my, um, that's my proposed answer to the questions that I've raised. We've got a few minutes left. I'm conscious that uh, we've had a couple of talks overrun. But I'm happy to take any questions if anybody wants to raise a question. Um, I'm also more than happy to, if you want to grab me at some point this afternoon and just ask any questions about my judgments on these matters or tell me any of your experience or maybe, maybe tell me that you think I'm onto something, please do grab me throughout the event. I'll be wandering around. Thank you.